Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, August 23rd, and this is a look at your watch list for today. Real quick run through the futures. We are about 150 in the Dow. The NASDAQ's up 43. The Russell is up 20. Um, both gold and oil are up, so we're seeing a lot of green across the board. And Bitcoin took a little leap over the 50,000 mark, and we are sitting at 50,400 right now. So nice little continuation. I didn't get my ad in on Friday, although I had completely intended to, but at the end of the day kind of got muddied up with a few phone calls, and so I actually missed the close and everything. Um, <laughs> but this was the entry, the line that we were looking for, and we made a nice bump up above that. Beautiful move today. I'll watch and see how it moves along today, and then maybe um, I'm looking at Ethereum, Coin. I'm looking at all of these, so we'll see which one I end up taking. I really do like Ethereum. That's a little bit different than the Bitcoin side of things, so going to take a look at uh, at those. Um, it will be equity and it will be for a very long-term play. Now when I say long-term, it's going in my IRA to sit there and stew, so to speak. All right, so let's hop into some charts. <clears throat> I ended up hanging on to Microsoft over the weekend here. Um, again, this is why it's important to <laughs> kind of have a plan for contingency because I got a phone call that I had absolutely had to take there at the end of the day, and I missed the close. Um, not because I didn't know it was coming. I did. I just had to make a choice what was more important, and, um, well, you know, I can always make another trade. So I ended up holding on to Microsoft, gave it, um, moved up just so beautifully. Nice, strong close there on Friday, so I'm not too upset about having uh, to hold it here. It did take, um, it's a little bit red this morning. We're sitting at 3.04 exactly at the moment. Um, so we'll watch that for maybe a little pull and maybe even add to that position a little bit. And then NVIDIA ended up hanging out overnight and this morning, I believe, in the pre-market. That doesn't mean anything because we still have an hour and a half before the market opens. But in the pre-market here, it is up to 211. So at an all-time high here and we'll uh, watch those, um, those calls that I am in. All right, but let's take a little look back at what I like here this morning. Etsy, beautiful close here on Friday. We used the 20, we pushed up, we closed up over this trend line. That is the trigger to get in. This morning, it now with our markets up, um, of course, this is up as well. So remember, a rising tide will lift all the boats, uh, or at least most of them, right? <laughs> um, we do have a few tickers that are red, but for the most part, we're, we're seeing these the, a lift here in the market. So make sure that if you do get into something, have a really good plan for where it stops out because although we're looking to open green, we, this may be it. This may be the move of the day, which means you, you can get into something and it just sits. So those are things to always think about. We have Jackson Hole later this week for the Fed. Um, we'll see if they give any more news about um, how they're going to taper. You know, I think, uh, I think if they just give a little bit more of a plan, I think the markets will actually be fine with it. Because now we know it's coming, so now we just need to plan on how they plan to do it. But for the most part, I think they're going to keep it pretty vanilla. Because I don't believe they want to move the markets all that much. So anyway, looking at Etsy here, it is up this morning. It's just above 200. Really like the look in this. Looking at the 10, 15, 200s, probably off of an opening range. It is just above that close from Friday. So um, just looking for maybe an opening range play there on Etsy. And I like the 10-15-200s. Disney, I know several traded it last week as it started to make its way back up here. It is below the 200. I like Disney over the 20. Now this morning it is um, getting up much closer to that 20, moving up over its 200. It is sitting at 176.60, just you know, just a few cents shy of that 200. That two, uh, I'm sorry, that 20. That 20 also comes in line with that point of control. For volume so I like it over that that would be a trigger for me and I like the 10 15 180s on that move moving along to one that I have never traded so I'm gonna watch up here probably be more up to watch it here like the look of BBWI into that gap so this is a um, I made a nice reversal on earnings right we put in this bullish gap continued on right up through the point of control here got stuck moving into this gap. Now I do know that we have that 20 and that 50 up here. If 
kind of looking for that play from the 20 to the 50. I'll be really cautious on this one because the only options that look decent are the 917 65s or 70s. So we'll see. Uh, risk reward, I'm not sure this is um, the best of plays, but I think it, it might catch some momentum and, um, and move along. So something to definitely keep an eye on. And I will add it to my overall watch list so that I kind of keep a, a better track of it and how it, it moves. So just thought I would throw it out there. Johnson & Johnson, we've talked about this one several times this last week. You can see we keep kind of hitting the same spot. I like this over at 179.50 this morning. I think it is already on the move. No, it's actually down a little bit. This one is one at 178.55. I like it over the 179.50 area, and I'm watching the 1015 180s on that. We're also watching for um, FDA approval of vaccines, uh, you know, that are starting to roll out. Remember, we used the vaccine because they were given emergency youth authorization, but they weren't actually approved by the FDA yet. Um, they had enough material, enough studies to say that they they are safe, but they have to conclude their studies, walk through all those steps, and. These are starting to get their approval here. And, um, of course, there's been a lot of talk about booster shots and things like that. So the drug makers continue to progress, and I will watch J&J. &J. Procter & Gamble, a good old name on the list here as well. Again, like these, what we've taken some nice walk walks up. Take a little break and then continue on. I like this over 145 uh, 30 and for P and G I would be looking at the 145s, the 1015 145s or the 150s kind of depending on which um, which one fits your price point a little bit better but definitely out there in October 1015s. All right earnings coming up here right on the 25th so we have two days to maybe squeak some um, money out of CRM Salesforce it beautifully went through this trend line. Beautiful close there on Friday. I like anything over Friday's close. However, this morning, I think that we are, uh, yeah, we're, we're just inside that candle at 255.49. We'll see if we get a nice move back up through the close of Friday's candle. That close is at 256.13, so maybe 256.15. Hop in there for a test of that 257.87 and a move on for the earnings catalyst. I would not hold them through earnings, but I like the 917 260s on those. Well, we all know I love my dogs. Uh, sometimes a little too much, but I do love my dogs. And looking here at Petco Health and Wellness, this one has been pretty beat up. You know, you can see that, I mean, very clear downtrend here, right? We just, they look kind of like, uh, you, I, you can almost say this is, um, well, I don't know what to call it, actually. I'm trying to figure out, it looks like some kind of pattern, but it's really just messy, downtrend. They look like Christmas lights being hung to me. Um, but we finally broke that pattern here on Friday. I like, I'm going to grab this candle here. This pat, this um, break here, we, we tried on Thursday, didn't make it. Friday we came in, opened up, and this is uh, after earnings, closed up above the 50. A lot of room here in Wolf, but I would, again, be a little bit more cautious because they don't have quite the liquidity as many others. But I like the look here, and we do continue to really love on our pets. And I would look at the 2250s there. Now, the 917s are the first ones that really have anything. Um, but if you decide to play this one, uh, I would take the 917s and then look for a rollout to the October or November um, as those start uh, gaining more attraction. So that's what I'm looking for on Wolf. Zscaler, I think it was Joe who brought this up to my attention. We have earnings coming up in a couple of weeks. Beautiful little bowl that we put in here. Um, little double top, looking for a break of that double top. This morning, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning it is moving on. It's sitting right at 250. So right at that high, we'll keep an eye. A break of 250 is where I would be watching. And I would play the uh, 11, 15, 250. So going out to November monthly um, at the 250. Of course, if that's not your, if, if those are a little bit too pricey, you can always play the shorter term ones. Um, but I would stay really close at the money there. 
It isn't a day if I don't talk about Apple. Look at Apple here. Wow, we've been on quite a ride with this thing. It consolidated, consolidated, consolidated. Woohoo, we broke 150. Nope, never mind. Too scary. Came back down. But then immediately popped right back up to this trend line, which was the initial catalyst to get in. Love the look here in Apple over that trend line. Don't forget, we're going to start hearing about their new iPhone, right? Because that comes out in, um, well, they'll preview it here in September is the typical timeline for that. So loving some Apple and I like the 150s. You can pretty much take those in any month. The 150s in any month are good for, for Apple. But since we're over here, let's take a little look at Google. Love this look in Google. We have the three and the eight. They all came together with the 20, kind of kissed it moving along here beautiful look in Google here today. Again, this is banking on the market continuing to cooperate this morning. It does look like it will gap up. It's at 2780 and that's kind of the area I was looking to get in right at that 2780 for a test then up to the 2800 mark. The 2800, 917, 2800s are the ones I would look at. Um, they are a bit more expensive. Um, so you know, you kind of have to decide if the risk reward for your uh, particular account size will work. Try not to take a bigger position um, because you really like the chart. It's still better to really allocate your capital appropriately and keep your risk managed. Um, you know, when you put uh, money into a trade, you have to think about how much am I willing to lose, whether it, and I know that you don't want to think that way because we were like, oh, we all want to win. Yeah, I got it. But how much do you want to lose? And you have to think about it either in terms of a percentage of what you're willing to lose. Um, and I like to look at the overall account. How much am I willing to lose on this play? That dollar amount, what am I willing to lose? Um, and then that you have to stick to it. It's really uh, important that the rules you put in you stick to otherwise you're always moving your goalposts. So just like if the rules are always changing, so will be your metrics for winning. So keep that in mind. But a lot of these, um, the FANG stocks are doing really well here. The overall markets are doing well. The uh, international markets are doing well. So it looks like a good day. Now we just want to see that we get that continuation, that follow through. And hopefully this wasn't the move of the day coming before we actually open. All right, everyone, if you have any questions, please reach out. Heather C at GivingTreeTrading.com or hit me up in the chat room and I will be here all day.